Hi, this is Tom, and today I'm going to talk about a very common interview question that asks, what's the difference between overriding and overloading? Because I guess the words sound alike, so they think you're going to get confused or something, but they're two different things, and they're pretty easy to explain, so I will do my best to explain it quickly and effectively. Um, here's an example. Um, I have a base class, and I named it base class, to be clear, and it has one method, the add numbers method. It adds two numbers and returns the sum. The child class inherits the base class, and as I'm sure you know, when the child class inherits the base class, it gets all the methods that come with it. So I wrote a quick little program where the child class and it's using that add numbers from the base class and it's spitting out the answer so we should see a 3 when we run this boom 3 great now what if the child class wanted to be rebellious and make their own add numbers class with the same signature remember and this is another interview class what's a method signature it's the name and the parameters. It's not the return type, it's just the name and the parameters. That's what a method signature is. So it's the same method signature, but in child class world, when you add things, you also subtract one from them. I'm just doing that to be different. So the child class has an add number, which is the same signature as the base class. It gives, computes some differently but there you go now will this compile is the question yes it'll compile but it'll give us a warning and the warning is that you've inherited your uh, your class is inheriting from the base but you're hiding the method that's coming from the base class and that's okay if you want to but just be aware that you're doing it so if we run this program we're going to get to plus one, minus one, so we should get two when we run it now. Two. No surprises yet. The problem is that if you hide the base method, you aren't, you can't take advantage of polymorphism, which I'm not going to explain this video, but it's a good interview question, and I should probably make another video about it. So let me explain what I'm saying when I say uh, it doesn't take advantage of polymorphism. Um, I'm going to make a list of base classes. Call it BC, uh, LBC for list of base classes. And I'm going to actually instantiate the base class. Okay, so I have a base class, I have the child class. Let's add them to the list. And we can do that. We can have a list of base classes because a child class is a base class. So if we go through the this list for each base class in LBC, for each one we're going to do the add number and then we're going to write out the answer so it's going to use the base class and then it's going to use the um, child class or so you'd think but I said that these are base classes right so when it goes to use the child class what method is it going to grab is it going to grab the child class where you subtract one or the base class well because the child class decided to hide the base classes, it's not going to be able to, those two aren't connected, it's going to use the base classes. I'll show you what I mean. When we run it, three and three. Why? It didn't use the child's because the child said, hey, I don't want anything to do with the base class, so, you know, I'm my own class, I don't need it. And so you don't get to take advantage of polymorphism. So what if we wanted to? What What's the difference? Well, the difference is, that if you use the virtual keyword, and virtual comes into play when you're talking about override, which is the whole point of this, 
What you're saying is the base class can use this as is or the base class can overwrite it. The base class can use the same method but it can overwrite it. So now because I said virtual that gives permission to anybody who inherits from this class to overwrite it if they use the override keyword. So now when I run this program it's going to say use the add numbers from the base class when you do the base class and use the add numbers method from the child when you do the child and so we should get three for one and two for the other see three for the first one two for the second why we overrode the base class respectfully we didn't just stomp on it and hide it we the base class said you can override it because it's virtual and so the child class took advantage of that Now, what does it mean to overload? That was override. Overload means that the same class has the same named method, but a different signature. You're overloading the method. So, for example, you don't, and you don't have to say overload or anything. You just, if you create a method with the same name, but a different signature, the compiler knows what you're up to. It says, oh, this guy wants to overload it. So see, the same name, different, as long as you have a different uh, signature, in this case we have different parameters, so that's cool, um, you'll be fine. And I will show you an example. We are going to after we go through Lupin, we're going to... I didn't want to do that. What's going on here? I want to... My computer's rebelling against me. So the child class has an add numbers with three parameters. So we're going to show that no no add numbers takes three parameters. I don't believe that's true. Let's build it. Oh, add number. I misspelled. Add numbers and number are two completely different things. Add numbers. Okay, that should be good. So if I run it, two, three, and six. See how um, by overloading the method um, we can use the same name, but just different parameters. Now, so override and overload. Now, for bonus points, when they say, what's the difference between override and overload, you'll say, well, in the context of methods, and then you'll explain what I just showed you. But overload, you can overload other things too. For example, you can overload operators. And let me show you what I mean by that. There's a shortcut to do console.writeline. I gotta learn that. Console.writeline. So I want to write line 1 plus 2. Let's make it interesting. 1 plus 20. And I'm going to um, over plus load. So What's going on here? How is this? What's the overloading here? Well, we're overloading this operator. You see, in this case, it's adding two numbers, so it's going to give us 21. In this case, the same symbol, the plus sign, is actually concatenating. It has two different purposes. It's overloaded. So you can discuss that with uh, the interviewer when uh, they ask you and get some extra points. You know, say, oh, you can overload the methods and operators and events, all sorts of stuff. Um, and that sums it up. So I recommend um, you know, writing some of these programs, messing around with it, take out the word virtual, see what happens, and, and you know, just see what all the limits are.